Ah yes, it's time to review the Mint RF70. This is a camera that I have wanted for quite some time, and when I got my hands on it, I was really excited to use. But once I started shooting it, I quickly found out I was, I was just extremely disappointed. Let's just get into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. The Mint RF70. The flagship instant camera you could buy for wide that is there is a square version of this that just came out so i would imagine it being the same but this is the most expensive instant camera you can purchase currently at the day of this recording i got a bundle kit all that really means is it came with nd filters more on that in just a minute but this whole thing cost me just under a thousand us dollars you would think with a heavy price tag like that, this thing would be absolutely killer. And honestly, it has a lot of packed in cool manual features that you can find on manual film cameras or even just digital cameras. But what is this camera exactly? This shoots Instax wide film. You do get manual control over your aperture as well as your shutter speed. And it is a range finder, hence the RF in the name. And what a range finder is, when you're framing it up, there's a secondary window right below your viewing window, which is a whole other atrocious thing. <laughs> It's really difficult to frame this. I would put it in lines with the Lomo Instant Square, to be honest, if not worse. And that is where you focus your photo. You'll have like a window of two images with like a ghosting or transparent uh, outline, and you try to line those up and then you are in focus. Crudely described, I know. <laughs> this thing also features a built-in flash. It's not the greatest, but it does have it. But it also has a flash sync port on the side. So you can plug in external flashes to it. it. Has a tripod mount on the bottom. It powers via AA batteries in the bottom. Now you don't have to use this in full manual all the time. You can switch over to an automatic mode, kind of. And what I mean by that is when you are using the auto mode, you would think you would have to think. You would just be able to point shoot, get a photo. That's not quite the case. It's only like half auto. The only thing it really does is it makes the shutter automatic. It doesn't take into account whatever aperture that you are previously set in. And the aperture ranges from 5.6 up to 22. I might have a broken camera, to be honest, that hasn't operated at all like I've seen in any of the other videos. On the back, you have a little LCD screen and you can utilize that to help you to some degree with light metering and getting you know exposures. Mine doesn't work. Uh, I have not gotten that to properly work at all. And there's also something that I noticed that are on any other videos I've seen in the past. And that is regarding the lens. The lens, you have to set it to infinity to close it. Otherwise it will it just won't close. It'll, you could potentially damage your camera. That is still the case on this one. However, with these ND filters, you put one on and every other video I've ever seen, you have to remove the ND filter before you can close it because it isn't a cutout. On mine, you can put the ND filter on and it looks like there is now a cutout to where when you close it, there's enough room for the ND filter to remain attached. It does have a glass lens and it is really, really sharp. The camera has, like I said, it has auto mode and it has auto plus one for compensation and a minus one for exposure compensation. There's a bulb mode. There's also a rear flash setting, which is kind of cool. It, it will, it'll take a picture and then fire the flash, like right behind the shutter instead of before it. There's reasons for that we won't get into in this video. It ranges from one second all the way up to 500th of a second, which honestly isn't that fast. If it could go a little faster up to a thousand, whew, then we would be good and we wouldn't have to really worry about having ND filters outside. And you can take as many exposures as you want before printing it. So you can do double, triple, quadruple exposures with it. And the way to get your photo out, it has a release lever right here off the side to advance the ejection. And yes, the photo, as it ejects out of the camera, it sounds like the camera is going to explode every single time. I was originally gonna do this review of this camera 
as part of my annual Halloween special. I decided to cut it from the series because I was extremely frustrated with this because I wasn't even getting good pictures with it, let alone an image in general. So I wanna share some of the stuff that I did shoot while I was over in Ohio shooting for the Halloween special. And so that's why I'm also wearing a lot of Stranger Things things because you guys know I kind of theme my Halloween specials around Stranger Things. My frustration with this camera a little bit is that there's no instructions that it comes with. Like in the box, there's no owner's manual. There's nothing to tell you how to operate it. I've almost broken this camera like three or four times just opening and closing it. For example, this is a button right back in here. This is how you close it. You push that and it releases it to close. And then when you open it, you have to pull this and the bottom one to lock it in place. Before, I thought you just had to press on this. Now listen to this. Yeah, I was doing that and I'm like, oh. But then, I happened to go online and someone had the same uh, problems and they found out that you press this inside, off, not even labeled, it, it releases the latch. And you have to, when you close it, you have to make sure the focus is set to infinity so it can close. Otherwise the lens sticks out too far and you'll, it, it'll, it'll, it'll like crumple it. <laughs> a little frustrating. I haven't got a single photo though. I'm like, wow. They're all like either overexposed, blurry, not totally sharp. I'm still learning it, I guess, but this was an auto and it's still not quite. It's kind of hard to shoot with this thing. Get that thing. This is on auto. So. This is gonna be a dud as well. I might just bust out the floor <laughs> to get this shot. Wow. Okay, I wanna try one more. App I have it's just a light meter and I can set the aperture the ISO on the film for uh, for Fuji insects is 800 I just tap there and it'll give me the shutter speed it needs 750 this only goes to 500 though so there is an ND filter I have for this let me go grab it the clouds blocking the Sun right now so I don't need the filter now so I'll just put that in my pocket and we're gonna try again I'm ready for the loudest most screeching sound ever that should be it only two fails to get there i'm going to take a picture with the polaroid just to show you how simpler it is i probably get a better shot did it come with that no you buy separately yeah it's done in life so it still says there's six. Oh my goodness. God freaking dang it. Try this again. <laughs> Why are you using me? So far I've not gotten a good, like a decent photo that, that goes, whoa, it was worth it. I've not gotten one of those. They've all been like, yeah, my Fuji wide 210 is better quality pictures and pull the right as well. This is with the ND filter, like a four. Okay. I got it on the settings plus at ND four, eight. I am gonna chuck this and demand a refund. Thousand dollars. So I took a photo of the Foy's neon sign there. It's pretty cool. And I had, I've had to max out the settings, 500th of a second, F22. It's, I mean, it's an okay photo, it's kind, of, kind of underwhelming. It doesn't look like anything different that I could get with my Fuji Instax wide camera. It's even soft, but I think I messed the focus up slightly. Both of these are the first two successful photos that I've been able to get with this thing. Everything's been way overexposed or way underexposed. It's, there's a lot of trial and error with this, and unfortunately the trial and error costs money. But once you kind of figure out how to expose for this thing, it does get some decent photos. Is it worth a thousand dollars though? That's really going to be up to the eye of the beholder, the user, whatever you want to call it. For me, I don't know yet. I guess I got to continue some experimentation to find out. But so far it's been a headache. But this is promising. This is promising. I got some photos finally. Here are just some of the images that I've taken with this. It's just crap after crap. Barely an exposures on any of these. Outside, pure black, 
Here's a picture of Paco, probably the best one I've been able to get with this, at least one of them. And here you can tell how sharp it is. It's, it's great. It's super sharp. It's beautiful, but it's not that much sharper than any other Instax camera. It's a little bit and you get a little more depth of field, but is that worth the price difference? After about, I don't know, several attempts. Here's the one photo I got of Dave next to his pretty cool mail truck. Yeah, it used to be like an old USPS mail delivery truck. Not great. And he was in direct sunlight. It does come with a one box of film, which is nice. Be prepared to waste that box, figuring out how this thing works. I love challenges. I love learning new things. Finding something else to master is always fun. And this is kind of in that realm. I'd rather grab an Insax mini camera before I grab this. I love the concept of this and I love that there are people out there making cameras in the instant world. Love that. From my experience, if you wanna shoot with this outside, you're, you're required to have an ND filter set. All of the other cool settings that this has is irrelevant. Basically this turns itself into a regular Fuji Instax camera because it's too bright out there for the medium of this film. This is 800 ISO film. And so you will have to stop it down with ND filters. And this does not come with the camera. You do have to buy this separately. I feel that, that that should come with the camera. I haven't used this in about a month and now it won't turn on. The batteries are dead and it was, and it was off. When you close it, it turns off, I thought. Now on the shutter wheel, there is an off mode and it was an off mode, but now I can't even turn it on because the battery's dead. And they were brand new batteries in this thing, which also leads me to something else that I ended up having to contact Mint about. The batteries it came with powered the camera and it, and it would work, but the batteries didn't fire the flash. So I originally thought the flash was broken. And their response to me back after I messaged them, I told them who I was, you know, hey, I kind of, I do kind of know <laughs> a little bit more than probably the average uh, consumer when it comes to instant photography and how these cameras work. Then here's, here's my problems and my findings. And the response was, did you put batteries in the camera? I'm like, okay, yeah. Told you that and it's not firing the flash. I think the response back after that was, it won't always fire even when it's on, it reads the room. So if it's not dark enough, it won't fire. Now this is after me informing them that I was in a pitch black room and it still wouldn't go off. So my customer service experience wasn't the greatest with them. Not saying that they have bad customer service because I have heard good things about them, but this was just my experience with them. So what I ended up having to do was I tried different branded batteries. I went through about two other ones before the flash started working. Now, I also thought maybe the flash just needed to charge. So I left it on for about half a day with brand new batteries and it still didn't fire. It wasn't until I found this other brand of batteries. I found this guy on YouTube that tested batteries far more than I had ever seen anyone test batteries for. But he recommended these batteries. They're on Amazon and it's all max, all max batteries. So I put these in there and everything worked just fine. Apparently the camera does draw power even in off mode. So keep that in mind. Now I also had a problem with the film counter keeping up with the shot. Sometimes it would not change. And I ran out of film and it still read that there were six photos left. So that's a little frustrating too. I don't know if this is just a known thing across their cameras, but the camera that I have has a lot of problems. But outside of that, it's, it's just not that fun for me personally to shoot with. It kind of takes away from all of the reasons that I like shooting instant photography. I don't like bashing or hating on products. And this is a camera that I've been putting off making a video because it was going to be pretty much just that. I'm only really doing it because I get a lot of people asking me about it and I pay a lot of freaking money for this. This is not sponsored by them whatsoever. Now I said earlier in the video when I was in Ohio that this didn't come with the instruction manual. I was looking at this box. It says it, what, it comes with the camera, the warranty guide, two AA batteries, and the manual. No manual was in this camera. It wasn't sealed either. I wonder if this was like a return camera that I got because uh, there definitely wasn't an instruction manual in here. Mint cameras, I'm glad they exist, but it's in the name. You'll pay a mint for them. I have used the Polaroid S, what do they call it? The 670S with a time machine. That's kind of fun, <laughs> but you pay nearly a thousand dollars for that, which I don't understand why that camera costs that much just because 
they're not manufacturing the Polaroid cameras. They are manufacturing these and these are the same price as those. So why the heck are those cameras so expensive? Beats me. But again, I'm glad that there are companies out there still trying to put out cameras that shoot instant film. I love it. I will continue to buy them and try them and review them for you. But this camera does not get my seal of approval. I would tell people to steer clear of this, especially if you are just starting out, then you have no business starting here. Trust me, start with something else. Then if you're curious, you can look into this, but I have a feeling it will give you quite the headache. <laughs> and not only the headache, but dollars and cents in wasted film. So there's that. But after looking at these photos and even when you nail a photo, right? You nailed it, it looks so good. For me, it wasn't worth it. The cost that it took to get to this point and the cost of the camera, the overall quality of the image, it's not worth it. It's really, to me, not worth justification of $1,000, in my personal opinion. But that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and hopefully it helped you. So I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.